I'm begging in a very chaotic way, terrified way. And his presence is just so calm and steady. And I'm also thinking about like what I had been doing to get me into this situation. And I felt so fully known, but loved. I didn't feel any condemnation. I didn't feel any hate at all. But I did feel just sad that I had wasted time like this and that I had gotten tangled up in this stuff. And so the very next moment, we are in a second place and this place is like outside the sunlight shining and I'm looking at millions of people. Life is hectic so wherever tomorrow takes you be ready with factors chef crafted and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 options a week including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie and more they've got a variety that fits your lifestyle. Factor has restaurant quality meals ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. They also have various easy options for the entire day, from breakfast to midday bites, smoothies, and more. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is a nutritious and delicious experience, and it won't break the bank. You can customize your meals by choosing 6 to 18 per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule deliveries anytime to fit your schedule. Factor meals are 100% hassle-free, giving you more time for what matters. Head to factormeals.com slash otherside50 and use the code otherside50 to get 50% off. That's code otherside50 at factormeals.com. Meals.50% off your delicious hassle-free meals. Hello, my name is Janice and I am going to share with you my near-death experience that I had in 2018. My death experience was a drug-related overdose. I'm going to jump just directly in at the moment that I knew um, my body was shutting down. I was asphyxiating. I could not get in air to breathe properly, but there was actually something very powerful and profound happening within my body. It was as though the chemical substances and my cells were fighting each other. And it was within my body, it felt like an adverse chemical reaction is the only way I can describe it. And during this time, I was frantic. I did not want to, to die. That was the last thing that I wanted in that moment. Of course, many times in my life, I had struggled with depression and thought that my life didn't matter and that there was no reason to go on. But when something like this actually happens, you really begin to realize how precious life is. And so I'm fighting for my life. I am in my mind crying out, please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. There is somebody with me. And during this time, I remember him helping me to sit down. I don't know really what he did after that. Um, I know that 911 wasn't called. It seemed like hours that it was going on, but yet in reality, it was only just a few minutes, but everything was happening so fast within my body. The chemical reaction was occurring. I knew I had gone too far. I knew that I was in major trouble. The sensation of adrenaline and just absolute terror was filling me filling my mind and my body. And I, at this point on a couch, reclining back and my feet elevated, thinking somehow that would help, but everything within me just knew I was dying. And it was at that point that I literally began to feel like my spirit was separating from my body. And I'm crying out, please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. I'm begging God not to let me die. And it was as though my spirit begins to flow into the corner of his living room and up in the corner. And yeah, at the same time, I am holding his hand. I remember feeling like maybe that would tether me to this realm. And I'm feeling my body begin to shut down. The only way I can describe it is I became hyper aware of my organs and which ones were no longer functioning. Although my spirit was like in the corner of the room, I could still feel the body and the energy in my body began to flow downward as though it's flowing down out of my feet. And I remember looking down at my chest and just 
wanting my heart to beat and willing my heart to beat, and it wouldn't. There was nothing I could do to save myself at this point. I knew this was it. And I remember as I'm looking down, it was like the final heartbeat happened and the body's shutting down. And I'm knowing without a shadow of a doubt that I do not want to die. And so I closed my eyes and opened them in another environment. The most beautiful environment. The color is between a gray and a, a light lavender, and it was a dynamic color that seemed to shift and move like a rainbow, like the inside of a, an opal. It was shimmering, but so beautiful. And to my left, there's three very tall beings. These beings are human-like, but what I would describe as translucent. I could see directly through them. I could see their outline. But I recognize these things to be angels. One extended his hand to me and I knew I had a knowing within me that if I took his hand, that was me agreeing to die. But that was not what I wanted. And so I'm at this point being very much myself, very panicked, very much not wanting to pass away. I'm thinking about everything in my life and how meaningless some of it was and how I had worried so much about the very meaningless things. And directly in front of me, I'm feeling this energy, this love, like permeating me. And the first thing I think as I come to that understanding is thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. Because this power was so powerful. It was like being electrocuted without pain, but I could feel the current just running through me. I mean, if you've ever been shocked, but it didn't really hurt you, just magnify that times a billion. And that's what it felt like was just radiating into me. And this presence was huge, very huge. And I realized how, how small I am and how fragile. And I was saying, you know, please, please, please don't let me die. And I was mentioning to this presence, which somehow I had this knowing in me that it was a male presence, the father, and I'm communicating to him about my children and wanting to be back um, specifically for my youngest child. And I'm thinking about my older two children and how, what, where they are in this moment, thinking about they'll be okay and feeling so much remorse for the fact that I had blown it this way and my youngest child wouldn't even know me. She wouldn't even remember me. And I'm begging in a very chaotic way, terrified way. And his presence is just so calm and steady. And I'm also thinking about like what I had been doing to get me into this situation. And I felt so fully known, but loved. I didn't feel any condemnation. I didn't feel any hate at all. But I did feel just sad that I had wasted time time like this and that I had gotten tangled up in this stuff. And so the very next moment, we are in a second place. And this place is like outside the sunlight shining. And I'm looking at millions of people and they're standing very close together. They're shoulder to shoulder. Everyone just looking up at me with like no expression, no joy, but also not sad, just waiting, just expressionless. And I remember I'm looking at them and I'm sitting on some kind of a platform and his presence is right next to me. And I'm looking at everyone and knowing I'm supposed to do something. And I say, what do I do? And I'm leaning into him. And I just remember like leaning into the presence and saying, what do I do? You know, just, but trusting there was just this element that I could innately trust him as this love is again, still like, I don't know, it's just all over me. And then his response to that question is love them. So I look out at all the faces and I'm like, well, sure. That doesn't seem like such a big ask. It seems so easy of a task. Very quickly. I said, yes, I could do that. And not only could I do it, I would would want to do it because if there was any chance at all for me to return and be a mom, that's what I wanted to do. And so I'm looking at everyone and he says, love them. And I'm saying, okay, okay, well, what am I going to say? And I'm telling you that that was my way of saying, do I have to tell the truth about why I was with you? Does that have to be told? And he said, the truth was his 
answer. Like, what do I say? And he said the truth. And I was, I think I was very embarrassed for that to be the answer, but very much still willing to share this experience. And I said, well, what do I need to change? And I am referring to about the story and about myself. And he says nothing, meaning tell the truth, but also the implication was that I wasn't powerful in my own way to change myself or that I couldn't change myself, but that he was going to change me. And it was just this understanding that I was just gonna tell the truth and everything was gonna eventually be okay. And so I'm in agreement with that. And I said, well, again, looking at all these faces and you know, nobody stood apart. Nobody was off to this direction or off that direction. Like everyone was together. And, and I knew that his love was for everyone. There was no one who was better than or that his object of affection was stronger for than another. It was just equal. And so I said, okay, well, where am I going to learn everything? And he says, it's already inside of you. It's within you. And I thought, well, okay. So in just like the blink of an eye, we're back in the original location, which is that beautiful environment. I'm happy because I'm coming back. And I know at this point that I'm coming back. It was just an unspoken. He didn't say that you're going back. I absolutely knew at this point that I was coming back and I'm happy and I'm feeling those feelings of gratitude and joy at the idea of coming back. And then it was like, I was pulled, just pulled into his spirit. And the love was like, I was becoming one with that. It was becoming me and I was becoming the love. And it was this exchange that happened on an atomic or cellular level. And then the next thing I know, I'm looking at my hand. I can see through it, but I'm seeing that it's, I don't know how to explain this other than I'm understanding as I'm looking at my hand that we're, I'm a three part being a spirit, a soul, and a body. And I'm receiving a lot of information about what that actually means to me and why it matters. And I'm seeing that within him, all of these other people are there as well but they're not acknowledging me or even seeming to notice where they are. It's as though they're just carrying on, just living, just living alive. And, but yet inside him. And so this is also the point where I'm, I'm remembering things that have happened in my life that were traumatic and understanding a greater purpose and a deeper understanding of what had happened and the other people involved and, it somehow in this environment made sense. And there was no more pain associated with those childhood traumatic experiences. There was no more pain associated with anything that I had been through. It was just as though I was completely whole and completely healed. And there was so much that I saw about and felt about love and in that place that I would love to share at some point, but love is such a powerful substance. It was, it was like the substance of the atmosphere was actually love. And so then at that point, I'm being sent back into my body and it was as though like I'm back in my body and I take the biggest gasp of air ever imaginable. And I'm back in my body and I'm alive and I'm ecstatic. And that was when I began saying, you know, the answer is love. All the stories are true. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. And the person that I was with, he looks like he's seen a ghost. I remember his face was like horror, absolute horror that I was talking. And then I began to feel this heat like inside of me and it came up from my stomach and just incinerated me on the inside. It was very, very hot, but I wasn't being burned alive. It was not damaging me. It was just very hot. And I remember shaking and sweating and being a little worried at that point, like, oh my goodness, what does this mean? And, and then that is when I tried to talk. And when I tried to talk, it was a language that I do not know that I had never heard. And that is when I thought I was saying, you know, the answers, the answers are love. The answer is love. The stories are true. Jesus is real. Like, that's what I thought I was saying. But the person that was with me said that, no, I was speaking another language. Wow. Since this experience happened, I can say that everything in my life has changed.